to the GMI Hub uh, Live Online. We are doing this amazing show today. It's going to be talking about songwriting in particular. We're going to be talking about collaboration. My name is Dale Borland. And I'm Cheryl Duick. Welcome to our, our Monday webcast. We are so excited to have these awesome recording artists with us. We have all the way from Waterloo, Jeff Cato who you may know from the song, his latest song called Running, which we've been hearing on the radio. We have Josh Fatta all the way from Michigan. And he just recently, well, he's released a few songs, but his most recent song is I Will Bow. Um, but what's really interesting is Jeff and Josh have done some collabs together. And we're gonna learn more about that. And we have all the way from Brampton, uh, Raymond Toe, who is really known for his rapping for Sp spoken word i don't want to box him in but i know that's his yeah, specialty. yeah. so we want to welcome all three guys thank you so much for being here i'm so excited to have you guys this is awesome we, we want to get maybe some some aspects of how you would write and we'll start from there when you're writing a song uh like what behind the making of a song so i know you probably have different methods different understandings of what you maybe jeff you're more of a guitar guy maybe i don't know josh I, I uh, I'm more about um about the like I like I play I do play guitar but I but I I play and I sing at the same time uh so often mm -hmm. if I'm like I won't melody I'll I'll sing and kind of come up with the melody at the same time um but that's just my own personal uh preference I'm 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 not that good of a guitar player so you know it's just kind of works out that way yeah yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm actually more of like a like a melody guy and an idea guy. So I kind of just pop in with like ideas. Sometimes I'll sing a melody in my head because actually, uh, believe it or not, don't play a guitar. Um, so sometimes I'll mess around on my keyboard a little bit, or I'll think of like, man, I really want to put this melody with that lyric, and you know, so I'll go to one of my my friends and pitch ideas. Nice. Um, I guess. Toe, so what about you? Yeah, I, I guess I would say that I like to uh, be spontaneous. So if I can find a nice flow that I think works mm -hmm. uh, on a new uh, on a new beat, or if I think um, that there's a something I've never tried before, that's just I, I like to experiment. So um, if it's too easy, then I think that other people will think it's too easy. But that's just the way I like. That's just the way I look at it. So I don't know. Yeah. So you'd be like to start off with a rhythm and you got your pattern and then you can talk over it and free, freestyle. Yeah, pretty much. I guess freestyling a lot more recently. Yeah, that's true. we have been seeing during COVID, Raymond's been putting up uh, little raps about wearing your mask and being yeah. clean. And really been, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if anyone's picked those up yet, but those are kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are. Well, Josh and Jeff have recently re um, released some songs um, I'll start with you, Josh. You released I Will Bow just this past Friday. How did you know? Is that a collab song or is that just a song that you wrote on your own? So that is actually a collab song. Um, actually, so I was working with a newer artist here in Michigan and also a good friend of mine. His name is Kyle Fuller. Um, he is actually a guitar player who, you know, I asked him, I was like, hey, you can write a song together. He's like, man, I've never done that before. I'm kind of nervous, you know, all that stuff. And I'm like, hey, it's just hang out and write a song and uh you know, we were really feeling we really wanted to write a song like about authority like how, like how god's authority like he's always natural. and so we were like you know their song to write and, and it came we did a verse and a chorus i think i did that and then i said hey kyle what do you think and uh give him some encouragement give him a little bit of push kind of and eventually he came up with the whole second verse and i was like dude your verse is better than mine you know the idea i had and so we fished it together. I'm like, congratulations, dude. Like after maybe I think an hour or two, we fished it all together and I said, all right, let's make some chords. Congratulations. You made your first song, bro. And uh, he's been sharing it on his Facebook page. So he's like totally telling people like, dude, I wrote my first song and I'm proud of him. So he's a good guy. So that's kind of how it happened. And to us, that that's a real, really important part of mentorship. And when you take somebody to the next level, now he's relaxed and he feels that He's done something in a creative way. And it's just nice. Thank you for that, Josh. Really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, Jeff, <clears throat> sorry, the song Running, I think that's your the latest release you had. Did you do that just a few weeks back? or, is, or... No, uh, Running is in its last month of uh, kind of shelf life, if you will, for radio. 
Um, so our, our next or my next single will be coming out in September. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's done really well. Uh, via radio, I mean, um, it's charted, so, uh, pretty, pretty happy with it. So what's the but, story behind that song? Yeah. Sure. So, 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 I mean, if you guys, uh, um, you guys eventually, uh, or if you haven't yet heard my testimony, um, you know, I, I definitely was not the same person I am today. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and, uh, and to me, it was just kind of, um, you know, when, when he saved me, it's all that I can do is, is to, uh, continuously be running after Jesus. Um, you know, people often call me a, like just a fireball because I'm just on fire. Um, so, you know, we're running, running with my hands held high, running, running for the rest of my life to the one who died for me. Right. And, um, I, you know, one of the, one of the lyrics in the song is, is when I look back, um, you know, I saw a monster, uh, in the mirror and, and what he saw, it was his child. Um, mm -hmm. and that is something that I think that most people don't recognize is that even though we look at each other or at ourselves in a different light, God always just sees his hurting child. Right. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it, it actually wasn't a single to begin with either. It was one that was just like a fan favorite at, at, uh, at shows and events. And then um, a couple of people said, Hey, maybe you should, maybe you should recut it as a single. Uh, so we did that with, uh, with this song and um, yeah, it turned out great. Loved it. Wow. And Rayto, man, do you write with people or do you collab with people who have written songs so you can put a, a rhyme or how does that work for you? Um, that's a great question. I, I like to have a lot of, um, I like to give other people a lot of creative control, but I also like to know, I also like to, um, to give direction to, towards a song as well. So I find that I do a lot of the starting, um, whether it's conceptually the idea of the song, or I'll create the chorus and someone else can sing it, or I'll just create the verse. But I usually find that like, it's, it's, it can be difficult to write a song. Like if you want it to be as professional and as, innovative and you want it to be something that you're going to like three years down the road mm -hmm. you know, you, then I find that it takes a lot of effort to really to really look at that and and so like you know I, I usually find that when it comes to creative direction I, I do a lot of it myself but then there's other times when I hear other artists and I really like what they've created and sometimes I have to tell them hey let's make that into a song uh, so there, there's different ways and like I like to be like more of a motivator let's just keep Let's take these ideas and let's just like do it. Let's build it. Let's be like Solomon, you know, not just a wise guy, but actually building something and like, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. That is cool. And Raymond, I know that the, the big songs I know from you are Trying to Love You and Summer. And I believe Summer's the one that's the the collab song. Is that correct? Uh, they're both collabs, actually. Summer, I, 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 Josh Lehman is on that one. And then Trying to Love You, I, I found someone to sing the chorus, but I wrote the, the whole song. All right, so let's, let's talk about how you find someone to collab with. Because I, I, I know that uh, if you have a, a collaborative effort with two people, you have to really trust each other and, and to understand maybe more about each other than maybe, maybe it's the song speaks for itself. But how do you find each other? How do you find someone to collab with? Are you asking, everybody's quiet. Who do you want to take that? Yeah. So uh, it's actually kind of funny. So when I find people to collab with, I literally just kind of ask them, hey, do you want to like hang out or get coffee or do a virtual like sometimes I do just come straight up and say, hey, you want to co-write? Um, you know, it's just having a good hang. Like we'll chat a little yeah, bit. But, yeah, but, yeah, but bro, bro, like we find each other uh, via like different Facebook groups and stuff like that. Right. So oh, yeah. so Josh and I like. Like he, he doesn't just go up to some random dude on the street and be like, hey, bro, I want to grab a coffee and, and write. Like, oh, yeah. uh, like, so, well, so that, sort that, of, sort that's my point. Into, exactly. Like, um, you had to know yeah. each other somehow to get to. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so Josh and I, like, for instance, we met on a group called Song Chasers. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I saw this hungry kid uh, kind of going after songs online. And then, you know, you can take it from there, Josh. Yeah. So basically, yeah. I kind of connected with. Jeff and like over time like I think we like I don't remember exactly when we exchanged numbers and everything but I think like I was coming out with love wins at the time I was kind of right I was like hey like 
you know, this was like my first time, like, like we were just chatting back and forth a little bit just as right. friends. So did Jeff contact you and say, hey, how's it going? Is that how yeah. it kind of started? I think, you know, I don't remember Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, I saw you, he was posting like crazy on this page, uh, on this, on this Facebook community. And, um, and I just saw that this guy that just wanted to get better. Um, you know, like, like, I don't, I don't want to write with everybody. I, um, especially cause like you get on there and you see, uh, you know, there's people that are posting constantly, but, um, they don't take criticism well. They're not coachable. They're not. And you could tell just by just by the reactions and comments, and um, and when I when I saw Josh posting and you know he was reacting to like you know uh, Brian's comments and things like that, it was like it was like oh, okay this dude gets it he's he's hungry he loves Jesus that was the biggest thing oh this guy loves Jesus uh, I want to get to know I want to get to know him um, so I reached out to him and just said hey man like uh, you know are you, are you up for a co-write what do you got on the go um, so we brought Love Wins to the table, and and I didn't want to come in and and because um, I, I know I, I knew that he was a kind of a new writer. Um, I've been writing myself since I was like fourteen, so I uh, I didn't want to come in and be like, hey, like these are things that you need to to change because it's you know it's it, he basically writ, had written the entire thing, uh, but I came in and kind of gave him a different perspective on on the song and and uh, and and maybe. You know, I think that we changed changed the way we said a few things and 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 things like that. But um, kind of that's how how we met, and ever since we've kind of connected on on probably like I don't know eight or nine d different songs since. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's been it's been great that way. So mm, cool. Yeah. And so, Mr. Toe, how did you meet the first person you collabed with, or how did that happen with you? My or first, do you remember? That's a great question. I'm just like, what is my, what was my first collab ever? I don't even know because I feel like I've collabed so much that I just like, what was my first collab? And then what would be a common way that you would be uh, first meeting someone who's, who you'd like to collab? Do you see them perform or do they see you perform and they approach you, you approach them? Um, you know what? I don't, I don't actually collab with, with a lot of different people, but that, that might be, that's something that I, I would have to, I think I have to reevaluate my philosophy on who I would collaborate with and, and, and for what reason. But a lot of my collaborations early on were with the same people because uh, I was in a group. And so we would do collaborations over and over multiple songs. Well, um, that makes sense. That makes sense because you know somebody, there's a, there's, a, there's a relationship there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it was very much an iron sharpening iron. He's a rapper, I'm a rapper, and we have two different styles. Let's see if we can make this work or... Um, yeah, I've collabed with like a rock genre, like a more of a screamo genre and like collabing with an R&B or like acoustic and like it really, I think it just comes down to, um, it comes down to a person's like what they're really about. Like I, I like how Jeff, you're saying like you, you saw Josh's, you know, heart behind, behind what he was doing and, and who he was as a person. And I think that that's important too, you know. Snoop Dogg could approach me today and I, and I could scratch my head and be like, you know, I don't know if, not that he, he ever would do that, but like, you know, would, would Snoop Dogg and I be on a track? I don't, I don't know. Like, I, I don't, you know, like, I don't know Snoop Dogg like that. It but, depends if it's Snoop Dogg or if it's Snoop Lion. Or Snoop Lion, that's right. It could be someone else tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, he, he's, got, he's got two different personas. The Snoop Lion is his gospel, like, he, he's, he did a, go a whole gospel thing. Under, oh, under really? The, yeah, there's Snoop Lion. What? Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. This is this is this is a few years back, but yeah, it's hilarious. <laughs> was it good gospel? Was it was it like decent music or? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that says it all. <laughs> that says that tells it all. All right. <laughs> yeah, that basically says it all. Hey, I just like to take this time to interject and say um, we are going live GMI Hub right now. We're doing an interview. We're talking about songwriting, and we're particularly talking about collaboration on today's program and we hope you're enjoying it as our guests are jeff cato uh cato sorry and we got josh Fetter. oh no you got it right you got it right cato oh cato yeah. okay good and then we got mr toe and these guys man we're bringing to the table some of their life experiences with writing and we hope that you'll be able to take some of those little um glean some stuff that maybe you can encourage you, you to do 
do your writing as well. And if you like what you're, what you're seeing, we want to encourage you to share it. Let people know about it. Um, tell your friends about it. If you have a, a friend of yours who is a writer, maybe you're a writer and you want to collab with somebody and you never really got a chance to tell them that, maybe this is a good chance to say, hey, check out this interview. Um, so please share the experience. That'd be so cool. Thank you so much. Well, I have a question for you. How has collaboration, like, obviously you've got a camaraderie going on when you do collab. How does that affect your writing? How, did, how would you say it, does it work? Does it not work? Oh man, where do I even start with that one? Yeah, I would say it definitely works. Um, I would say, honestly, every single, probably 99.9% .9 of my best songs as an artist have come from collaboration and co-writing. Um, like people have even told me, um, and even other fans have told me that are, you know, doing, are much more further along than me, have told me that if you want to get anywhere in this industry, servant, servant heart is where you want to be. Um, and a lot of times, like, it's just building that relationship. Like sometimes I'll come into a co-write and be like, I won't even mention like that the song is for me. I'll be like, what do you think? And then see how it goes from there and never come in assuming that it's going to be a song for me. I just go in kind of writing like that and and over time like I got I, that's all I gotta say about that it just becomes the best song ever when you write with other people just different ideas like I'm a melody person someone else might be lyrically driven and just have way better lyrics than what I have and it's just it's cool to see that that come to life that is awesome what about you uh Jeff can you add to that too I uh, well I mean to me I I love um, I love collaborating uh, with people. Like I said uh, earlier, before we, we were recording, um, it, it, you can you can have a song, um, and I find that uh, like with new songwriters, uh, they'll baby their song. You know, they don't want that song to be touched, but like really, they'll come to me and they'll be like, "Oh, like what do you think?" And it'll be like, "Do you really want? Do you really want to know?" Because like you know, I'm not I'm not tearing your song. Uh, I'm not going to tear your song apart. I just want to help make it make it uh, better and and have a different outlook to your song than what there currently is. So whenever I write, I love co-writing. Like even if I'm writing at home and I'm and I've started a song, because uh, often when I come to a write, hopefully one of us uh, have communicated to the fact of like, hey, bring something that you've already started, and we'll all just kick around ideas, and then at the end of the day, we'll land on one. Um, but you know, if, if I'm writing at home and I'm not, I haven't written with anybody, I'll, I'll call up one of my boys and say, Hey, like, you know, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, is this something that you feel like you can get into? Um, because that's how you make a song better. Um, you know, like all, any, any great song, you'll see that there's like five, six, uh, different writers on it, uh, because it just keeps getting passed around to make it better. Right. Um, I, I personally don't really write unless there's like three people in the group. Um, you know, I find that I find that there's uh, the more people in it, uh, you know, the more people would be able to say, hey, this works better. Or, or, you know, you're not getting have a have two people in it and then, you know, get stuck on something and be like, well, why is your idea better than my idea? If you have that third person or a fourth person, um, they bring something else. They, uh, and, and even if you're not writing in it. You know, like, um, like there'll be situations or times when I've written with, uh, with Josh and somebody else and I'll be like, man, I feel like I'm not contributing at all today. And then, but really I've like helped, helped steer the ship in some way. Um, so yeah, collaboration. And uh, I don't even know if that was the question, but, I, but yeah, I love collaborating. I love, um, I love being able to be together and, and, and kind of growing a community, a community of people that, um, you know, you're comfortable with writing uh, with, you're comfortable with um, doing your life with, because that's ultimately what this is all about is, is growing your ministry and, and um, yeah, so. Okay, right, Raymond, what about you, my friend? Um, I, I really appreciate both of those perspectives uh, for both you guys. Um, it seems to me like, uh, Josh, like you're really, you know, open in terms of like, you're, you're willing to, uh, you know, give someone else like, the the way in terms of you know writing what what they what they feel it, they you know they want to write and, and being honest and open like almost like a gift is what i think about like your song's a gift and like what do you think and like willing to reciprocate those ideas and with jeff also finding that balance in terms of like hey you know 
let, let's 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 even critique our gift let's just see like if this is the best gift we could you know possibly give and like i think that those really really complement each other as much as they seem like they're very different i think that's really cool um i think i find myself a little bit in between um as, in, in terms of both of those perspectives as far as like you know i appreciate when someone is really honest with me as an artist um, I don't know how many years I, I would have wa I, I've wasted or would have wasted if someone didn't just come out and just straight up say, man, like that last song could have been better, you yeah. know? And then the people just like, you know, they, they, I don't, I feel like that doesn't come out enough. And, you know, especially with your friends, like they really encourage you. Oh yeah, that was dope. Or emoji, 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 emoji. Um, that could have been better. And at the same time, you know, it's always good to know that, um, that people will hold you accountable and say like, this could be, this could be better next time. What can we do differently next time? And I think I've, I've had that support since I was young, just in terms of even after stage performances, uh, why didn't the crowd react this way when we did it, but someone else did it? You know, what, what, what does our stage presence look like? Are we just standing in one spot or like, can we utilize this whole space? Um, just being able to like really see all the peripherals and all the moving parts and say, I've been doing this long enough to know that, Hey, we can always do better. So yeah. yeah. Having, having the, having friends that are also friends, but are also in the industry um, to your point is so key, man, because like, I've got like, I've got friends who would tell me that anything that I put together, I could write something right now for not like for, I, you know what I mean? For nothing. And then I'd be like, Oh, that's the greatest song I ever heard in my life. And then, you know, most people would be like, yeah, yeah that like totally yeah oh yeah but then you bring it to somebody that you uh, that you uh respect in the industry and that you respect as, a, as another writer as another person and, and be like so what do you really think and for them to respect you enough to say hey this sucks you could do this better <laughs> uh is is uh is something that when you find those people you should definitely hold on to them right so yeah. and very much why Oh, sorry, sorry go Josh. Go ahead, Josh. Here, sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, I was just going to I very much remember what Jeff told me Love Wins sounded like. Uh, do you remember, Jeff, what that sound, what you told me that sounded like? Oh, oh like old Blink-182. Yeah, you told me it sounded like the the song that you'd write for, like, your girlfriend or something like that. Yeah. At, at first. And I was like, oh, I would have never thought of it like that. And then uh, when we reworked, we redid the lyrics a little bit. And I was like, oh, now we're writing Christian music. Mm, yeah, I yeah. think it's it's what you're touching on is something really essential. If you have, have a co-writer, there's a trust there. And there's also uh, an understanding that when you present that, you got to be um, uh, a little, uh, what do we call it, hard skinned. It, because their opinion is valuable to the growth of the of the piece, right? So uh, and that yeah. sometimes can be a challenge, I think, for people. Because, you know, like you, you've, you've met people, they have, it's my baby, you know, don't tell them my baby's ugly, you know. So, right, you want to right with somebody who you can trust their, and respect right yeah yep. so how do you find like when you have many collaborators how do you know who's going to take the song like make the song public for example like how do you make that decision i whenever i go into something i feel like we kind of already have an idea of who the song is being written for i feel like every time that i knew that I, like i was going into write for me everybody knew it uh, if we're, we're writing for Josh, everybody knows that we're writing for Josh. It, it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, it's like, hey, uh, or, or say for instance, like I know a lot of artists and uh, and some artists are not songwriters. So, you know, for, for myself, I, with my networking, I can go and say, hey, like this person needs a song. Um, let's, let, let's, uh, let's just write something and then we'll pitch it. Um, so, I mean, uh, it, it could be where like three out of the four writers aren't, or three, three or four writers that are writing that day aren't even writing for themselves at all. Um, it's just kind of something where we can take it and pitch it and, um, and see if it lands somewhere. Cool. So, so then, and I'm only going to bring this part up because we've had other meetings, other shows where we talked about royalty. So is there like a standard agreement with the royalty thing um, or does all royalty royalties go to the person who's making the song public or do you have one of those, Hey, we'll just split it. Well, whatever number of ways it is. Like, how does that work? I think uh, we just did like, we just do even splits all the way down. Usually like if you're in the room um, a lot of times, like some people, like for me, I honestly, when I did my first co-write with, with Jeff or with 
even writers rights before that i was really nervous to be in the room with someone who is significantly better than me just on all on all cases and and i remember someone telling me well josh you know you, you gotta learn somewhere if you're in the room and you present even just like an idea it takes the pressure off mm -hmm, of you mm -hmm. so that you don't have to feel like i gotta contribute this much or i'm not gonna get paid it's like you know what even splits all the way down that's how we roll yep. and it just creates a better relationship for people. And that's just been, you know, cause I, I've had, I've actually, I've had recording contracts offered to me before. Like, you know, it's like here talking about royalty here, royalty there. And then it just doesn't, it doesn't add up to a great. Trip. So, you know, even splits seems to work. I like that answer. Mm -hmm. Ray, is that the same for you? You're pretty quiet there, man. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. If someone contributes like, I think everyone's name should be on everything they contributed to. I think everyone should um, be from the least to the greatest to the person behind the scene. Like, I, I, I think like, I guess maybe like for people who contributed to the song, that person would get royalties. If so, like, for instance, like I, I really like video content. So if even if someone created the idea behind the video, okay, instantly that person becomes a co-director. That becomes like something allocated that, that no matter whoever sees it and they look in the, you know, they want to know more about it, you know, that person will get, you know, what belongs to them because I didn't do it all on my own. So I'm not going to take all the credit. It doesn't, it's not going to, that's not going to fly for me ever or anybody, I don't think. You'll never get ahead like that. So, yeah. Yep. It's Very true. Good. It's true. It falls in line with what we always talk about here, which is unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth. That's how the industry will go further and how ministry will go further. Correct? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, okay. I want to, I'm going to delve a little bit more into the songwriting aspect. Um, and, and I want to try something with you guys, but I'll ask this question. How do you come across, uh, how do you decide on the lyrics? I mean, you kind of talked about it a little bit. Someone comes with an idea and then someone else comes up with a different idea and you kind of put the stuff together and see what comes out of it. Um, but if you ever have any songwriting sessions where you are all kind of trying to find the lyrics and if so, how did you try and find those lyrics? Sure, all the time. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, is with the, with our industry, it's we're singing the same songs over over and over and over again. So it's like, you know, how do we discover new ways to say things, right? Um, how do we discover, um, you know, new words and and um, you know, like like uh, like Brandon Lake's new song "I Need a Ghost" is filled with with uh, with song lyrics where I'm like, oh man, like. Like, I don't need a counterfeit comfort. You know what I mean? Like, like that was like, oh man, like that is amazing. Right. Uh, and it's just something so, so simple where you're like, man, that's thinking outside the box a little bit uh, in terms of, um, in terms of lyrics. But, uh, but I find that if you're, if you're in a good group of, of writers, they'll constantly challenge you uh, to, to find something better or do something better. Uh, you know, often we'll write, um, I got a loss around me, sorry. Uh, often we'll write like uh, a chorus and then be like, uh, you know, like a tip for, for me is, is like, um, sometimes you got to switch the chorus with the bridge because the bridge is better suited for uh, for the song than that chorus. Uh, or maybe the chorus right. turns into the verse and then you got to write a better a better chorus, mm -hmm. right? Because um, mm -hmm. the chorus has got to be the best thing that you got. So, um, I mean, we, we end up finding it after some, after some digging and i mean we set aside between like well like up to three hours uh ma the majority of the time to sit down with everybody and and hash it out so um you know within three hours uh, we hopefully have uh have the song or or you know the meat of it anyways i really have much more to add to that i mean sometimes i know like during earthquake when we were writing it I was with um, another two writers, Eric Neifel and uh, Alex Rublin. Um, so they actually are co-writers on that song. And I remember like we were fishing around on, I think it was the bridge. And we were just like, why don't we, like, it sounds too generic, like so generic that we were just like, oh, how do we say this? How do we like say the same thing, but differently? And uh, like we'd use things like, uh, I use Rhyme Genie on my phone. We'd hop online and look like B rhymes sometimes because like sometimes you want like a different word and you don't know what all like 
fits until you see it and you go, oh, that would be a great word to use. Like, why don't we do that? And so, like, use little resources like that to help out was just super uh, helpful in in making Earthquake. Like, mm. you know, so, yeah. That's kind of cool. That's kind of cool. So I have a question from the audience here, which asks, which asks um, well, I'll pre-ask a question before I ask their question, which is, the fact that we've been in COVID right now, um, have you been co-writing more often than normal, even though we're in COVID or have been in COVID? Is that uh, a question? Here, yes, Jeff. that's a question for any one of you. I throw questions to all three of you. <laughs> okay. Well, I, I guess if everybody's quiet. Um, so uh, so uh, COVID has been wonderful to me uh, in terms of kingdom. Um, God has been so good in terms of uh, opening up new relationships with people that, mm. that otherwise there would not have been there. Um, some of my best friends that I've, that I've made are, are during this season, and it's because they're, they haven't been able to tour. They haven't been able to, to do ministry outside of writing and producing themselves. Um, so I, I, think, I thank God for this time of, of being able to uh, focus on, on my craft and you know we've we've written written and recorded an entire album of mine during this this time um so i uh, i absolutely 100 percent have been writing more and more often i i try to write every day um and you know I, I think that if you set if you set goals for yourself maybe you don't have to write a song every day but maybe you take 10 minutes and you just try to be creative and you just try to write maybe a couple lines right like you don't have to be a seasoned writer in order to do something where you're growing yourself um so my advice my advice to any any songwriters that are uh coming up or or wanting to get into songwriting is just um is don't one don't be afraid to reach out to people um uh we are all just here for the kingdom uh, we all just want to write. We all just want to help each other get better. Um, two, you have to grow your own craft. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how great of a writer you think you are. You can get better. I can get better. Everybody can get better. So um, 100%. Uh, COVID's been awesome in terms of being able to grow the creativity and, and um, allow things to, to flow for the kingdom, at least in my life. I've heard many a writer uh, say that it's okay to make mistakes because that's you learn and you can move on. Yeah. Yep. How about for you, uh, Josh and, and Raymond, has COVID worked for you in terms of writing, in terms of even doing collabs? How's that worked for you? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, it's great. Right. I, I honestly, that my answer probably doesn't shift for, much further than what Jeff's answer is. It's been a lot of time to, to write, a lot of time to make connections and like, 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 I think it really birthed a lot of really cool songs. And, uh, like, I remember there was a week somewhere in COVID where I did, like, back-to-back -back, so back -back songs, like, just every single day. And sometimes, actually, a really cool exercise that I, I was taught once is uh, it's kind of like impromptu writing. Like, you pick an object, even if it's, like, a tree, and then you start elaborating, like, hmm, tree. All right, it's green. It's big or small. It's got a lot of branches, and you just kind of like formulate your own little like chorus or something out of it. And it's like a little, it's a like fun exercise to get your brain moving. And sometimes, like, be driving around and I'd be doing that, and like, oh, this is neat. And uh, it kind of helps pop in for like when I get into my chorus. So, yeah, COVID's been great. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. So, we're going to try that. We got to try that. But before we do that, I want to know this um, how often About do you? How often do you guys co-write? Oh man, all the time, anytime. <laughs> well, I mean, just like just with anybody, you mean, or and with anybody? Yeah, I'd say like probably most of my songs that I write, I write with somebody else. I don't really know if I really write too much by myself. I mean, get an idea going, maybe. Yeah. There, there was a time in COVID where I wrote every day with somebody new um or with or with other people so i mean it's uh now that things are kind of going back to a little bit of a normal here and people are kind of going back to work and back to ministries uh it's turned into probably once or twice a week now for me when it comes to actually being able to sit down with somebody else and um and uh and write 
but I still, like I said, I, I still try to write every day. That's cool. Raymond, how about you? Um, yeah, I think I was challenged, uh, again, I'm always being challenged on things, <laughs> but ultimately I think like what I was experiencing early on was too much collaboration. And uh, I think people were telling me that, I think they were letting me know that I might be depending a little bit too much on someone else's skills in terms of singing uh, a chorus and like, maybe I should be the one to make my own chorus and sing it. And, and you know what, um, as an artist, you can't do everything, you know, uh, we can't all be J. Cole where I'm producing the beat and I'm writing the song and I'm rapping it and I'm mixing it and I'm mastering it and I'm promoting it. And I'm, like, we can't necessarily all be J. Cole, but we can, we can try our best to do those things. And, uh, you know, sometimes just depending on it too much, as far as like the crisis, um, I think it's interesting because I think that in all genres of music, sometimes the most powerful music that that we resonate the most with are like songs about personal crisis you know whether it's about like you know that deep despair that thing happened in your life that breakup you know or mm -hmm. whatever it might be but at the same time i feel like as an artist i personally like in, an, in a genre because I, I i i mostly function in hip-hop but in the genre that i'm in I haven't experienced most of the things that other rappers are talking about. You know, like I, I haven't gone and done drugs and like, you know, done all these things in the club and, and you know, I, I don't even pop in Zans and all these crazy things. Like the thing is like, as an artist, I write from, I write from my, my present experience looking at the future. And what I mean by that is that truth applies today. It applied yesterday and it applies in the future. And you can only really like explain your experience from what you're experiencing now, but against the backdrop of this, this truth, you know, if you believe that Jesus died for you, that's true yesterday. That's true today. That's true tomorrow. Like Jesus has, has, has already completed, you know, what needs to be done, even if I don't feel like it today. Mm -hmm. So I have to write with those two things in mind. And sometimes crisis like as, as appealing as it might sound to write a song about someone who uh, suicide, which are, is a pretty popular topic. If you can do a really amazing song that touches on someone's life experience on suicide, like you will have a pop in video. But one thing I've, I, I haven't personally experienced that. And I think what this crisis does is that it puts us all on a similar playing field. Now I can understand what it's like for someone who actually lives in a crisis in their everyday life. Maybe someone who's actually unemployed. You know, not just now, yeah. but maybe that person was actually homeless before this even happened. Maybe someone was in the, in, the, in the hospital dying before COVID ever came along. And now I can actually write a song being in it that does speak to someone who's in that situation. And I'm not just making it up based on what I heard. You know, like I've heard tons of stories about and songs about suicide, but like I can't write from your perspective, at, at least for me. You know, I can't be deep yeah, yeah. on that issue from your story. I, I can tell your story, but I like to write from my experience. Mm -hmm. I like it to make sense. And I usually write with a lot of double meanings. Um, yeah. Have you guys ever seen the movie Fireproof, that Christian movie? Yeah. 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 Those same people who created the movie Courageous, Facing the Giants, etc. So like all of my lyrics have these double meanings. So my, for my, the one time I wrote, I'm fireproof, courageous when facing the giants. That's why they call me David when faced with Goliath. And it's like the average person wouldn't really get it. But then when I go and do spoken word, I can break it all down. And it's mm -hmm. like, wow, there's so much like that, that I didn't really think about. And I, so, yeah, sorry. That was a really long winded answer. Yeah, you no, 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 that's cool. Oh, Cause yeah, you're, ta you're talking about speaking for what you know, right? From your personal experience and you can, you can speak to it better because it's, it's you, it's where you're from. It's, it's at your place right now. I uh, just want to remind everybody that we are uh, speaking with three amazing songwriters, Christian recording artists, Jeff Caddo, Joshua Fata, and Raymond Toe. And they're all speaking today about collaboration and writing songs. And maybe, just maybe, if you guys are interested, we'd like to spring a little exercise on you yeah so you know josh you had a great idea as you said you know sometimes you just look at something like a tree and you go hmm let's do this exercise 
a tree, it's green, it's short or tall, whatever, and you come up with some kind of a course. So we have three amazing writers right with us right now. Actually, probably more than that, but anyway, I'll say three amazing writers right now. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would be absolutely awesome if we could get you guys to collab right now. What yeah. do you say? Jeff's environment is now outside, so his stimulation is gonna be a little different. All right. Uh, and well, Josh is, is sitting by his laptop, and so he has got some different stimulation there. And we got Raymond, and he's the man on the mic. He can just linguistically go like freestyle. And so we got a lot of different concepts potentially. This is gonna be awesome. Okay. And audience, if you guys if you guys are watching this right now, share this right now. This is a moment yes. you will not see. Okay. <laughs> this is a moment right now, live, where you're gonna see three amazing artists that are gonna collab right here, right now. All right. Go ahead. Jeff, what do you got around you? Ah. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> got, a sure, I got a barbecue. I got a barbecue. Got a barbecue. A barbecue. Are we gonna... All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. And it just it, it depends. What are we what are we writing? Are we gonna write a CCM song? Are we gonna write a uh, gonna write a little uh, little little country ditty or what? Like a quick chorus on uh, barbecues. <laughs> chorus on barbecues. What do you want to do? Well, I had another suggestion, but um, <laughs> yeah, can I throw barbecue. another suggestion yeah. in there? Yeah. yeah. So I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Um, GMI Hub is actually doing a project where we're inviting songwriters to um, submit Christmas songs, original Christmas songs for a collab, for a compilation project that we want to promote um, basically this Christmas season. You know, starting in uh, late October, November, we're, we're trying to encourage that. So um, to get kind of the, the, the creative juices going, can you talk about Christmas snow and even a barbecue if you want to put it in there? Sure, yeah. that gives us a little bit more ammo to work on. Yeah, okay. Right. Good. <laughs> you guys feeling Christmassy today? So yeah, ho ho, hey. let's go. <laughs> and audience, if you're watching and you have some words, type some in and help yeah. me type out. Let's make it a collab moment. <laughs> That's a Dale, great idea. Dale, where's your guitar, bud? It's upstairs. Uh, Do you need a melody? Yeah, you need a melody, right? It's just uh, kind of like, it's, it'd be no. easier to... Maybe I can maybe I can have one brought to me. If we, we mm -hmm. What what genre do you guys like uh, usually play? Me personally, um, I'm on like I do pop rock, but I also do like the CCM and worship. It's kind of like that's like the broad there. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm CCM worship. Okay. And Ray uh, is mostly. Like, I'm having getting a message. Go hip hop. Go hip hop. <laughs> So yeah, got, yeah. <laughs> don't go. So we've got we pretty pretty much got pop, hip hop, and and worship. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, we can so, settle on that. So what if we what if we settled on something like kind of in between, like a little bit more of like a like a pop, like which I know is really Josh is like in in that domain, but like uh, I, I think Jeff probably could could help us with the chorus, and then. I'm just throwing ideas out here. Yeah, yeah, um, that's what this is about, man. Help about. us with a chorus, uh, jo like, Josh. What do you do? You like um, play guitar yourself, or do you? Does who who like? Does anyone? Play I got I, I got guitar coming. Yeah, he yeah, does. Cool, okay, cool. Oh, what about some right. like? What about some like? Oh, Christmas is coming. It's finally here. I don't I don't know like, you know, just like, just something that's a little bit more cheer. I don't know. The sleigh yeah. bells are ringing. It's all that I hear. Is and that and that fire and the fire is roaring. Okay, oh, you yeah. writing this down? What's up with that? Yeah, I've got a little. Uh, I've just got a little document. I'm writing things down on. So I just kind of pulled a halfway yeah. one here. Christmas is coming. Sleigh bells are ringing. What would the beat sound like with that? I'm gonna get you something now. Let's see if I can pull up some beats for you. Do you have anything on you, on you, Raymond? Do you have anything around you, electronics or any 
Any Let's loops? See. I mean, I, I do. Let's see. Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, maybe we should leave it in your hands because you can get some pretty bad beats. I don't have much. <laughs> bad beats. Uh, let's see. Um, it's going to be mostly like a hip hop, though. That's the only problem. I don't yeah. know. Let's, let's see what kind of. Or if you're a little more chill, we can go like. Uh... That's really hip hop, yeah. Christmas is coming, it's finally here. Look outside, yeah, look at that deer. <laughs> it off with his so like nose shining. The Christmas is coming is a, a reoccurring theme. Or we could go a little more like, we could go a little more gospel, like a little more like, uh, let's see. That's something more like you were doing, Jeff. Christmas is coming. It's the same rhythm. Almost kind of like the first, like the very, very. You like Sorry? the very first one? I do too. I like the first one. What was I felt first? like I kind of had somewhat melody. I was kind of humming back there. Uh, oh. Go back to the first one you had there. If you can remember, Ray. Yeah, and that worked with Jeff. That worked with what Jeff was singing. Put me in that Christmas feel, you know. You had Jeff. All right. While I'm playing the music, I can't hear you guys, so I'll just have to let you well, well, do it separately and then come back together at some point. Cause I, I can only hear the music at this point, but like, feel free to sing it again. Why don't you just pause it for a second? Just pause it for a minute. Just, just pause the music for a bit. Okay, so uh, we've got the kind of... Yeah. So, Jeff, you're like, and Christmas is coming, or something. Would you have that? Finally here. Okay, that's my little bit of singing right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just around the corner. Something yeah, like that. That's a good one, yeah. Christmas. Spreading some cheer, because that comes from the here. Ooh, yeah. 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 This is coming. And if you're tuning in just right now, we are doing a live collab right now with Jeff, Jeff Pato, Josh Batta, and Mr. Toad right now. So listen in and share this, of course. It's super messy. Super. It's all right. It's all right. So what's all about? <laughs> So Josh is now writing down what we have so far vocally. Uh, Mr. Toll is getting some rhythm, some beats, and Jeremy's kind of, uh, Jeff, sorry, throwing out some lyrics, and uh, we're gonna see so, what hit, what sticks to the wall, right? So kind of directionally, I'll throw this out here. Uh, I got kind of like a Christmas coming. <laughs> I don't hear anything. Hey, hey, Raymond, can you pause for a second? Yeah, thanks, bud. Because we're getting we're getting one one sound at a time, and uh, we can't hear what Josh is. So, Josh, what would what were you saying? I saw your mouth moving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me, uh, tell me what you think, Je uh, Jeff and Raymond. But I've got just a. Uh, like a starter line. I got like, um, Christmas is coming. Let's spread the good cheer. The fire is burning and the family is here. And da 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 Something like that. Nice. That yeah, Raymond, you had a key. You had a key in your loop. So maybe you could play that so that Jeff can get the same key. 
I don't know what key you were in. Is that, is that a G? Got a piano right there, so. Yeah, I think it's in G. I'll try that. I'm almost thinking that uh, we should all make it a Christmas song and release it like around Christmas. <laughs> I think we should. <laughs> that would be amazing. And you can, and you can all send it to us and we'll put it all on our compilation. <laughs> I was just saying to somebody today that I got to get working on my Christmas song this year. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Never, I've, There's never had your the of, I've never had the honors of making a Christmas song. That would honestly like make my year. <laughs> yeah, no, we're talking. I've, I've never made one either. That's why I'm thinking this would be an opportune time. Christmas is coming, so. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> Um, do you guys still want to hear the beat or no? I think the chord progression is there too, Jeff. You might want to hear that melody. of a really good song. Yeah. I really am. This is going to be a really good collab. <laughs> yeah. So Josh, are you using your, um, what was that word tool that you use that helps you finding the right? Are you using that? Actually, um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm kind of, kind of free flowing off my brain a little bit. Um, so like when I, I was thinking of melodies that might fit with that same uh like beat. the rhythm yeah the rhythm yeah, yeah. rhythm a little bit and it's it's all open for tweaks too because that's you got to do that as a songwriter be open for tweaks and stuff um so i'm kind of getting sort of an idea for and then some hypothetical lyric that uh can be open for edit. just kind of pitch my uh doing my part here yeah, <laughs> okay nice. well it looks like it looks like the audience is doing some as well they've got oh, good. Uh, Let's see. Oh. They put uh, okay. Snow Christmas barbecue. Um, first, uh, sorry. Um, reindeer. So roasting reindeer on the barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because I thought of that from the very beginning. The barbecue. We could do some reindeer steak, but I thought, no, I'm not gonna go there. But somebody else had to do it. <laughs> so there's some there's some collab, but maybe you don't want to. Use that. Maybe not. No. <laughs> that well, might that might terrify a few little kids. <laughs> yeah, I got some Rudolph on the barbecue. No, let's not, let's not do that. Tell me what, uh, Jeff, tell me what you think of uh, just hypothetical lyrics. I won't sing them, but I'm just going to uh, talk to you about them. So I got Christmas is coming. Let's spread the good cheer. The fire is burning and the family is here. There's something about the feeling. The feeling of Christmas. Yeah, well, that's what we're going into probably. Yeah. About that feeling or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I mean... Like, like a family, I feel like, I feel like like you get, you picture like the family sitting around like the fireplace, like you know, like the day before Christmas or something like that. Yeah. And just yeah. Having, like, I mean, like, I mean, you can you can describe like the next thing is like we could describe like, um, you know what what is usually around the fireplace at home, right? Like mm -hmm. the stockings are hung, the Christmas or the tree is up, the stars on the top, presents all around. You know what I mean? Like, uh, mm -hmm. like that that's the part in the song where you're like, okay, so. We know it's Christmas. We know that the family's there. If we're around around the fire at Christmas, you know, like let's set let's set the scene, right? Let's set the table for that. Um, or like, what's the next thing? Are, are we having a feast? You know, mm -hmm. are we gonna ha are we gonna have reindeer? Is Grandpa gonna be uh, making barbecue reindeer chops? Right. <laughs> like so, uh, that would be kind of like the next the next part of the discussion. Emily is if, here. If, if we were actually, you know, if we were sitting down to write an actual uh you know yeah we'd be looking at okay what like where do we go from here that doesn't just, it wouldn't go from like here to like yeah oh no well it's a good thing that you asked because this is, this is creating the conversation for everybody else to hear right mm -hmm. um so yeah that would be kind of my next my next point would be okay so uh we're we're having family there it's nice the snow's falling it's almost it's almost christmas time and we're sitting in front of a fire with family all right so what's next? 
right? We're waiting. Well, maybe not wait. Could be like, like you said, you're stalking or, or, or gift giving, or even like a lot of people watch like the same movie every year or whatever it might be. Um, Traditions, right? Yeah. Hmm. Traditions. You, you, you could talk about talk about like a little girl, maybe like maybe putting the the tradition of putting the the angel on the tree, right? Or like, um, Hi. yeah. No, he's even wearing a Christmas Hello. sweater. <laughs> <laughs> a Christmas sweater, eh? Yep. There you go, Christmas Hi. sweaters. There's something something about Christmas sweaters. <laughs> Christmas sweater in in uh, in August. There you go. <laughs> only, only at the Caddo household. <laughs> the stockings are stuffed and dun, 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 dun. Stockings. what is the next part that you are singing along yeah to? that's what i'm kind of trying to figure out the fire is burning and the family is here the stockings are stuffed and da, 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 and it's all Raymond, are you getting a few words happening on your end in terms of a, a rap or right. spoken word? I'm getting a few ideas. I think the, the general direction in my head is similar to what I'm hearing already. So it's kind of like uh, confirming that for me. But I, I'm just thinking like uh, what he's saying. I want to be able to compliment it and bring like a, a spin on it too. Yeah. Uh, but not, I don't want to use the same words either. So... He, I, I feel like the rapping part could probably be a little bit more Jesus focused. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, like, cause right now we're just talking about like the, the family things, the sweet things, mm -hmm. the, the things that like, like presents trees, you know? Right. But then when it comes down to the, to the, like what I would do if it was me is I would make that kind of uh, be the focus part seeing as it would be a, uh, you know, a highlight of the song. Right. I like that idea. So in other words, the rap would bring all the, uh, the concept of the present, like we talk about the presence, but the, the true gift is the, the gift of Jesus kind of idea. Well, yeah. you hit the presence is cool. The presence of Jesus kind of what I was, like, yeah. I was kind of writing that down actually. The stock, I got kind of like the stockings are stuffed and the presents are blank and blank, but there's something else that's there something yeah. like that yeah like, kind of leads into the starting to talk about here's the good cheer the family and stockings presents but then there's like a little little something else we're about ready to talk about that kind of thing stockings are stuff but like what are like stockings are stuff and the presents around the um presents are out is that what you had well, I was I was thinking more along lines uh, along the lines of like surround, right? So like stockings are stuffed, presents surround. Um, Ooh, surround. Uh, something to do with the angel of the tree with the. Um, and the pre the stockings are stuffed and the surround. It, it could be it could be I, I don't know. I'm not stuck on that. Um, stockings are stuffed. Or what about maybe the presents are out and surrounding, kind of adding extra. I think you're putting. I think you're putting too many words in there, actually. Cool. Okay. Sorry, Josh. Can you read what you have already again? Christmas yeah. Is coming. Oh, hypothetically, I've got Christmas is coming. Let's spread the good cheer. The fire is burning, and the family is here. The stockings are stuffed and the presents around. Mm. Just kind of let that there. Okay. Um, I, I think maybe that will be the clincher right there. I think what you have is like an opening space that now we can like shift the perspective. It's like, yeah, we, we see all the things that everyone else sees during Christmas, but, and then what's that thing to like, so, you know, the presents are out, the angels are around, the fire is lit, everything's great, but it's not about bam, or whatever, whatever that last line could be. Um, yeah. 
it's almost, almost like uh, yeah it's almost like every chorus has that one line that's like that clincher which is like oh i didn't think of it like that or like that's an interesting line um, yeah and it's usually I, the last one or the one that's repeated or whatever it might be so um what do you have again so i got um christmas is coming let's spread the good cheer the fire is burning and the family is here the stockings are stuffed and the presents surround us but that's where i've kind of stopped yeah i would have i would have had it so that like after the family is here you kind of repeat the family is here because then and because that'll separate the verses right i don't know is this a chorus it, or uh well this, this would have been to me a verse could, it could be a verse yeah it's not a verse. oh okay i thought this was a chorus no, no. That's, that's why. I, that's what I was thinking. Okay. Sometimes you start with a chorus. Sometimes you start with a verse. Um, I was kind of thinking, like, trying to think, like, uh, on both ends of the spectrum, how if I were to sing it, how it would sound, but also, if I were a hip hop artist, how would I sing this? You know, I know that's not my main genre, but just kind of thinking outside the box a little bit. And see, that's what be that's what's beautiful about what's happening here. All of you have kind of a slightly different. Um, can I say a bent when it comes to which music you, you kind of go towards, but this is a, such an opportunity to bring three different styles together into one song and what, uh, oh, it could make me cry right now. It's like, what a beautiful, <laughs> what a beautiful moment right now. Like this is unity right here. Like this is the kingdom right here. <laughs> this is awesome. I mean, yeah. I mean, all that's missing is all, you know, someone who does country or I don't know, something like that, you know, but just, this is just this us. No, just, 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 okay. yeah. <laughs> so we're not missing the country, okay? <laughs> no, we got everything. We're doing good. But this is absolutely it. beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And normally, I, and I, I want this collab to continue. Um, but audience, I know it's eight o'clock, and we just want to say thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Jeff, um, Josh, and Raymond. You are not leaving, guys. But yeah, stay right where you are. Can you? <laughs> you are saying we're going to continue the collab. And you know what, guys? If you have songs that you are writing on your own, or maybe you need to get some friends to kind of collab with. As you can see, something beautiful can happen just by bringing different ideas together. So I encourage you to do some collabs. And yes, we are accepting Christmas music for a Christmas, cap, uh, Christmas collaboration, Christmas compilation, there's the word, <laughs> a Christmas compilation project. Go to our website, www gospelmusicindustryhub.com we have a brand new website it has all the information there go there and and submit a song we are accepting songs up until september 15th so go go submit a song yeah. we want we to are so, music. we're so excited about this opportunity because there are people out there like like these guys who are here today and they've never written a christmas song before so this is like something for you to really grab onto and maybe make this something to help you encourage your your music ministry that's right so submit a song and remember we are going to be posting this on our youtube channel so go ahead and subscribe to gmi hub online but in the meantime know that we are coming back next week monday with a whole new topic but as for this week i want you to remember we encourage unity community mentorship and talent growth as you are seeing it right here and hopefully these guys will finish this song and we will have it on our album yay yes but All right. Thank you very much, guys. Take care and God bless. God bless you.